I'm often asked questions similar to this one from Alex. I was wondering something while I was training at Atachai. The sessions over there are way harder than I'm used to, but I assume he just puts me through Bangkok training. How do tyres do this twice a day plus running so much? I mean, they mostly have long careers and I've never heard tyres talking about overtraining. It's a great question. And the answer isn't only relevant to those training in Thailand, but to anyone training in Muay Thai anywhere in the world. Fighters, welcome back to another episode of Heatrick Muay Thai Performance. In this episode, we're gonna break down how the Thais train so much and why you don't have to. Training bravado aside, because it's easy as a fighter to fall into the struggle porn sway on social media, I'm gonna steer away from the emotional and towards the factual. Muay Thai training in the motherland affords fighters an incredible opportunity to rapidly level up through the best technical and tactical training and fighting opportunities that there are. However, there are some areas of limitation when it comes to physical athletic preparation. Generally, Thais don't understand how to program progressive training. They throw everyone into largely the same regimen, regardless if they're beginners or seasoned pros. And those that can't keep up or become injured as a result are deemed lazy. Even Damien Trainer shared with me his experience of burnout in Thailand in our podcast together. Now, so I was training from six in the morning till nine in the morning, then it's from three till six. And after a couple of days, I was, I was burnt out and I just had to have a rest. And obviously I had a rest, come back to the gym the next day. They asked me, oh, where was you yesterday? So I was tired, needed a break. No one spoke to me for two weeks. Mm. Like I'd literally come to the gym, no one would say hello. No one would, they just kind of hold pads, not really say anything to me. It took two weeks of training twice a day again for him to start doing anything. Yeah. But I think rest is just as important as actual training. Any successful Thai Nak Moy started training at a young age, benefiting both from a slightly less demanding training routine and being younger, recovering well from training too. But even so, of the hundreds of thousands of child Nak Moy in Thailand, most are broken by the training and discarded. Only the genetically gifted, those able to withstand the high volume of training without becoming injured, make it as an adult. And these fighters aren't necessarily the best technical and tactical fighters, only the most robust. Many technically and tactically superior fighters will be discarded simply because their training was mismanaged, wasn't progressively programmed. When I posted about this on Instagram, Liam Harrison also commented, a massive amount of Thais are burnt out in their mid-twenties and fall out with Muay Thai and disappear. It's only the elite guys who start to earn big money who stick around into their thirties and onwards. When I lived there, I saw fighters who were top 10 ranked in stadiums by the time they were 18 to 19 at the gym I was at. And at 21, they'd had enough and just started holding pads instead as the training was killing them. Overtraining is real and so are overuse injuries. And there's a boneyard of discarded fighters that you don't see. I'm not saying don't train hard. I'm saying pay attention to your body and don't break yourself trying to match those that have A, incrementally adjusted to tolerate high training volumes over years of training, and B, are genetically more robust than the majority. And the truth is, even the ties come undone when their training changes too much, even in as little as five minutes work. This surprised me too. Let me explain. When I carried out athletic performance assessments on elite Thai boxers in Bangkok with a five minute shuttle run test in the morning, I was shocked they told me their legs were too sore to kick properly when they rolled up for their afternoon training session. These full time pro Thai boxers with well over 15 years of training for three hours, twice a day every day, six days a week, were complaining about a five minute maximum aerobic speed shuttle test that even my health and fitness clients back home wouldn't have any issues with. These Thai fighters were finding that any new stimulus, even something very small like an increase in running intensity with demands on single legs stopping and turning, were a total shock to their bodies. They were experiencing DOMS, delayed onset muscle soreness, for the first time since they were little kids, just starting their Muay Thai training. DOMS usually peaks between 48 to 72 hours after exercise, and these guys hadn't even hit eight hours yet. We know that muscle soreness happens as a result of damage caused by doing something that the structures aren't adapted to. This could be a significant change in training volume and intensity, or performing a new movement through a different range of motion. And 
the eccentric lengthening muscle actions responsible for soreness, not the concentric shortening contractions. These fighters were adapted to what they've been doing day in, day out for years, but certainly aren't adaptable. Now you can understand why you can't simply just jump into the same regimen as the ties without a progressive lead in either, and you shouldn't be expected to. Also, it's easy to overstep the entry mark when the level of general preparedness isn't being addressed. Doms aside, the fact that the elite ties can experience such a strong reaction to a five minute activity also points to something far more insidious for those training full time in Thailand. Generally, ties are failing to understand what sports science calls the law of accommodation. Despite all their years of intense training, they are no longer physically adapting, getting better. They are merely accommodating, staying the same. That's a lot of time spent tearing up your body for no further athletic improvement. To get better, they must progressively plan their training better, introduce various training stimuli long enough to reap the rewards, and then change it up before it goes stale. Throwing more hours at your training is one way you can do it, but this quickly creates a glass ceiling, limiting your ultimate progress. Once you've maxed out the number of training hours you've got, you're stuck. And in reality, this ceiling can easily be broken if you understand how to structure your training more scientifically. And luckily for Western fighters, by far the vast majority of Thai gyms don't understand how to do this. And the traditional culture hinders their advance in this respect. Thai stick with the methods handed down from generations of coaches and fighters without question, without taking on new learning about physiology and performance and without attempting to improve things. These cultural traits are something that author and Somali boxing gym founder Dr. Lynn Miller discusses with me on our podcast episode together too. Using the example of age, you do not, uh, you do not challenge or question a person who is older than you um, out of respect for their age and for their life experience. So that's tricky um, in, in a gym environment. But for, with trainers, for example, and I do give an example in the gym where that kind of went wrong because in, in our culture, we reward people for uh, – job performance, uh, contribution to the business, or, or whatever. Uh, in, in a Thai business, it, people are, usually the older people are the ones that, that make, you know, they're the decision makers, they're the ones in charge. Although those training outside of Thailand can't hope to match the fighter's lifestyle afforded there, such as training twice a day, six days a week, taking a nap between sessions, and with little or no work or family commitments, Western fighters can use a progressively planned, periodized training program that plugs all the gaps missed in traditional Muay Thai training. And all it takes is some fundamental resistance training equipment and the knowledge of how to use those tools to optimize Muay Thai performance. I've got some great resources on my website that will show you how you can do this and close the gap on those that can afford the time to train full time for months in Thailand. And if you are training in Thailand, how you can swap out even just two, three hours a week from your 30 plus hour training week to reach new levels of physical performance, even if you've been trained there for over 15 years or more. You'll find links to these resources with this episode. And if you found this useful, please hit subscribe. Thanks for listening. If you found this valuable, please like, subscribe and share with someone else it could help too. Please give the podcast a review or comment below. We'd love to hear from you. As always, you can visit heatrick.com for more Muay Thai performance podcasts, videos, articles, and guides. Catch you next time.